The world's largest lithium-ion battery manufacturer, CATL, recently announced a new condensed battery technology that they claim has an energy density of up to 500 watt hours per kilogram. But what is a condensed battery and is this technology all hype or is it the real deal? Stick around as I share my thoughts and observations about this technology and also at the end of the video, briefly compare it to Tesla's 4680 battery technology. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. On April 19th of this year, CATL revealed what they're calling a condensed battery. And this new battery technology, really the exciting thing about it comes down to the fact that it offers an energy density, as they claim, of up to 500 watt hours per kilogram. And for reference, that's almost twice the energy density uh, as compared to Tesla's 2170 battery cells that are manufactured by Panasonic at Gigafactory Nevada. So this is actually quite a big deal. But what does CATL mean by a condensed battery? Well, we know thanks to this Reuters article that this condensed battery from CATL is indeed a semi-solid state battery, which is a technology that already exists and is being developed by a number of other companies. So we do have some other clues to draw on when it comes to making observations about this new technology. First of all, a semi-solid state battery appears to be a half step between an all solid state battery and a traditional lithium ion battery, which has liquid electrolytes. An all solid state battery has no liquid electrolytes and a semi-solid state battery still has some liquid electrolytes and it can have a number of other uh, solid state battery technologies integrated into that battery. Furthermore, according to this article that I found on Acuity Knowledge Partners website, quote, a semi-solid state lithium ion battery is a battery where one electrode contains liquid electrolytes while the other electrode contains no liquid electrolytes. When it comes to further details about semi-solid state battery technology, um, last year I was able to interview the CEO of a company called Zendur. And Zendur makes the Super Base V, which actually I recently did a sponsored video um, reviewing the Super Base V. Um, but nonetheless, previous to that, I was able to interview the CEO and I asked him specifically about the semi solid state batteries that they use in the Super Base V6400. And Brian said, quote, normally traditional NMC has about 15% of the weight from the liquid electrolyte. Our semi solid state batteries only have about 8% about half of that. Brian went on, more importantly, our semi-solid state batteries adopt a safer solid electrolyte membrane, which is very different from other batteries. The membrane has an interface modifier between the anode and the cathode, and the membrane can fix all the liquid in place. So actually there's no free liquid flying around inside the battery. The liquid doesn't move around, which is the core reason why it's so much safer. When it comes to specific details about the electrolytes used in CATL's new batteries, this press release does describe them by saying, quote, CATL's condensed battery leverages highly conductive, biomimetic, condensed state electrolytes. With that being said though, what does CATL mean by biomimetic condensed state electrolytes? Well, based on what I can tell, the term biomimetic is basically a describing designing technology that is inspired by or mimics natural biological processes. So it's kind of like biological mimicry. CATL doesn't actually dive into specific details about what aspects of this battery um, function like natural biological functions, but hopefully we'll learn more about that in the future. But nonetheless, moving on from that term biomimetic, once again, CATL did not reveal specific details about what they meant by a condensed state electrolyte. But I believe this may refer to the fact that these batteries do have some solid state electrolyte components in them, and they likely have somewhere around 50% as much liquid electrolyte. And it may actually have something to do with how these batteries are manufactured as well, because for example, Zendur describes on their website regarding the semi-solid state batteries that they use in the Superbase V6400, quote, In semi-solid state battery manufacturing, the chemical solvents used to make the internal compounds remain inside the battery during assembly. These solvents harden and become a solid electrolyte interface 
that is more resilient and far less likely to suffer the kind of chain reaction that causes fires and burns in other lithium ion options. Moving beyond the electrolytes, CATL in this press release did further describe at a basic level, some of the innovations of this battery technology and this press release describes, quote, what is more, condensed battery integrates a range of innovative technologies, including the ultra high energy density cathode materials, innovative anode materials, separators and manufacturing processes, offering excellent charge and discharge performance, as well as good safety performance. Now to be clear, just as the term uh, lithium ion battery can refer to a number of different battery chemistries, which can include different kind of anode and cathode materials, when it comes to semi-solid state batteries, these batteries can be manufactured with either traditional cathode or anode materials, or some of the more innovative ones that CATL is apparently trying to use with their battery technology. When it comes to energy density, with these innovative features, according to CATL in this press release, this battery technology offers an energy density of up to 500 watt hours per kilogram, but do notice that CATL stipulated up to. While ultra high energy density cathode materials and innovative anode materials may be used in the future, my guess is that the initial versions of these batteries and that these cathode and anode materials that are a bit more cutting edge may not be completely ready for mass production or they will be extremely expensive initially and only be cost effective for use in aviation, which as we'll talk about is something that CATL specifically is targeting with these batteries initially. Either way, I personally believe that we won't see a first generation condensed battery from CATL that actually has an energy density anywhere near that 500 watt hours per kilogram number. And I believe this due to the fact that I think the anode and uh, cathode materials that would be required to hit that kind of energy density, I believe those aren't ready for prime time yet and they still need more development. It's very likely that CATL will be able to produce a battery like that in the future, but once again, probably not initially. Now, when it comes to why I think this, I'm not just trying to be a pessimist here because I know CATL is an excellent battery manufacturer. However, when it comes to any battery technology, any new battery technology, um, in my experience, the first generation of nearly every battery technology that gets commercialized is less impressive than what was either announced or expected in its first iteration. In addition, when it comes to semi-solid state battery technology that's actually in a commercial product right now, um, the version of semi-solid state batteries that Zendor uses in the Superbase V6400 with an NMC cathode has an energy density of somewhere around 228 watt hours per kilogram, as Zendor revealed in their Kickstarter campaign, which is less than the Panasonic made 2170 battery cells that are currently manufactured at Giga Nevada and also less than Tesla's first gen 4680 batteries. Even if I'm wrong about CATL's first gen batteries hitting 500 watt hours per kilogram, let's say that they do that. It's very likely that would only refer to their um, aerospace grade batteries because they plan to not only have batteries specifically aimed at the aerospace industry, but they also plan to separately produce a battery specifically aimed for automotive use. Moving into CATL's basic production timeline for these batteries, in this press release it's written, quote, CATL can achieve mass production of condensed battery in a short period of time. And as I mentioned, initially CATL is targeting these batteries towards electric aircraft, but they also mention, quote, in addition, we will also launch the automotive grade version of condensed batteries, which are expected to be put into mass production within this year. So with that being said, here are my predictions for CATL's condensed batteries, and then we'll actually do some basic comparisons to Tesla's 4680 battery technology. My first prediction is that initially these batteries will cost substantially more than traditional lithium ion batteries and that they'll have a pretty high cost um, due to maybe using more innovative materials in these batteries. And because of this, I think that's one of the reasons why they're specifically targeting um, aerospace for these batteries, um, electric aircraft, because that market should be less price sensitive for a new technology than the automotive market. One of the reasons why I think this will be the case comes down to an example, for instance, from NEO. 
according to this notebook check article from February of this year, which is talking about the semi-solid state battery technology that NEO hopes to put in their new ET5 electric sedan. The author basically described in this article the fact that the semi-solid state battery technology initially that NEO is putting in the sedan is gonna cost roughly the same price as the vehicle itself. So initial versions of the semi-solid state batteries that NEO is using are extremely expensive, and I believe this will be the case initially with CATL as well. The price will likely come down for this technology, but initially I believe it's going to be extremely expensive. My second prediction for these CATL batteries is that their first generation automotive grade batteries will feature traditional cathode and anode chemistries, and likely their energy density will not surpass existing traditional lithium ion batteries, meaning that the energy density of these batteries will likely be less than 300 watt hours per kilogram. Once again, I'm referring to the first generation of their automotive grade batteries. Okay, with all that in mind, let's now move over to a brief comparison of these batteries, these condensed batteries from CATL versus Tesla's 4680 batteries. So with my expectations that I mentioned, I don't see uh, Tesla's 4680 batteries being rendered obsolete anytime soon by CATL's semi-solid state batteries. And the reasons why I believe this comes down to two main factors, and that's cost and energy density. In addition, if I'm wrong and these CATL batteries are better than I expect, and the first generation battery is just incredible when it comes to energy density and they can produce it at a very low cost. At the end of the day, CATL is a great battery supplier right now for Tesla. So Tesla could just purchase these batteries from CATL and that would also be a win because CATL is not a competitor to Tesla. They're actually a very important supplier. Once again, when it comes to cost, yes, I do understand that the cost of CATL manufacturing these batteries, that will come down with time. However, initially, I think for the first several years, Tesla will have a distinct cost advantage over this battery technology. Um, as a reminder, Tesla is developing out their dry electrode manufacturing processes, which make these batteries a lot easier and more cost effective to manufacture. And in addition, they're building out their own lithium refinery and will be processing a portion of their own cathode precursor materials using another innovative process. When it comes to some specific uh, cost per kilowatt hour numbers that have been thrown out in the past, in Tesla's Q3 2022 investor conference call, Elon Musk referenced the fact that he still sees a path towards a $70 per kilowatt hour battery cell being produced by Tesla, and that's before any of the incentives from the IRA program. In addition, beyond the cost of producing the 4680 batteries themselves, since these batteries are designed to be part of a structural battery pack, there are manufacturing cost gains, not only on the cell side, but also on the pack side and on the vehicle integration side as well. So you have to factor that in. You have to factor in the complete holistic package. Next, when it comes to energy density, once again, I don't expect that the CATL automotive grade battery cells, um, definitely not the Gen 1 cells, I don't believe those are gonna come out at 500 watt hours per kilogram. They're likely going to come out at less than 300 watt hours per kilogram, at least initially. That number will go up, but I believe that initial number will be lower. Now, Tesla is producing their next gen of 4680 battery cells right now at Gigafactory Texas. And I personally believe that each one of those battery cells will likely have um, around 98 watt hours of energy per battery cell, which would be a little bit over a 13% boost from the approximately 86.5 watt hours per cell that the first generation 4680 batteries have. And that 86.5 watt hours per cell number once again comes from data shared by Jordan from the limiting factor on YouTube. I would love for you to share in the comment section below what you think about all this. And once again, I wanna say a special thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and definitely helps make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Thank you so much.